It's here and I'm the savior. This is the complete defending tutorial for FIFA 23. You guys have asked for it. You smashed the like button for the complete attacking tutorial. So I just have to drop it. Almost feels like a bit of a toy. Didn't really go for it. Oh! And they just tuck it underneath the goalkeeper. The, the control display there is absolutely ridiculous. Of course, it wouldn't be a complete tutorial without delving into, firstly, formations and tactics. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not recommending anything specific for you guys, simply because I've always stuck by my motto that you should be discovering your own formation and your own tactics to see what works for you. What works for me will not work for you. Yes, you could adapt your game style, but at the end of the day, we all have our dissimilar ways of playing. We have our own game styles and formations and tactics will suit those specifically. But what I will do is make recommendations for you guys, of course. I do recommend using a formation with at least two CDMs. This will allow you to break up the play. It also gives you a lot more in the attack because you're able to get forward and have more options in the midfield. More specifically having two CDMs allows you to break it up when your opponent decides to counter-attack you as soon as he's won the ball back. You're able to have them on stay back while attacking and that's what I recommend you for exactly player instructions for these CDMs. For the two CDMs in your formation I recommend of course having them stay back so that they will be back ready to break up the play when you lose the ball. Now formations of course I recommend maybe the 4-4-2, the 4 2 3, one, exactly what I'm using this year, 4 triple 2 and all of the above. You can use any formation, but I recommend at least two CDM. In terms of tactics, I'm not going to recommend too much as I said. I will be dropping my complete custom tactics for the start of FIFA 23 for you guys in the coming days. But what I will say is I recommend at least 60 depth. Reason being, it's the same as last year in 22. You want to put pressure onto your opponent. Right stick switching is more relevant than ever this year. And of course, we're going to delve into that later on in the segment. But what I will say is, sit to death, my recommendation, so you can put more pressure onto the opponent and not sit back and allow them to pop long shots or in general for you to be too passive in the defense. Of course, we will move into the basics to start off this tutorial today, lads, with a complete defending tutorial. Tackling, quite easy, okay. All you need to do is tap the circle button. We also have the quick tackle. You hold in R1, and essentially the standing tackle, which is the lightning fast one, is great for when you want to quickly make that tackle if the opponent is getting away from you. If he's about to get away from you, hold in R1, press the tackle button, and they'll quickly make that tackle. The lightning fast one, that's better if you aren't quite as good with your reactions and you've missed that tackle as they go going for. Jockeying, of course, I've always recommended the speed jockey technique for you, but the jockey button itself is L2 or LT on that spot. You can use the speed jockey technique, which is L2 and R2 or LT and RT at the same time, and that activates the speed jockey technique. There is a technique also where you're sprinting towards the attacker by holding R2 or RT. You then, as you get close to him, hold L2 or LT. And that is not the jockeying technique I recommend this year and you will get to know what I'm recommending you guys later on in this tutorial but those are the basics that's how you jockey. The slide tackle they're very strong this year especially with how EA have added in the stronger Langia slide tackle the one that bursts into the attacker and you're able to quickly get the ball back. It's a quicker slide tackle this year which makes it even more useful. It's square on PS5 or of course it's it's on the Xbox. The clear button, again, it's similar to the standing tackle, okay, it's circle or B on Xbox, okay, and you basically want to tap that. And that is different to actually how you, let's say, win a header, because winning headers is different. The amount of power you hold onto the actual button is how high they jump, but it's different for the clear button. The clear button, you should tap it, because the animation will not be in your favor if you hold it down compared to if you're using the pass button or the cross button. You want to tap the clear button for your defender to essentially clear the ball more efficiently. Of course, we then move into play switching, a very vital aspect of your defense. And if you can get it down pat, especially right stick, you will have a full segment on, will improve your defense tenfold. The way you can play switches with L1, and that's the standard variation of it, where you basically tap L1 and the closest player to the ball will essentially be selected. You then have right stick switching, which is the art right stick, and you're flicking towards the play that you want. Depending on what setting you have, if it's ball relative, it's from the ball. If it's player relative, which is what I recommend, because you can select any play you want, then it's from the play that you already have selected, and you select the other players with the right stick as you go along. 
Those are the basics though. We are going to delve into, of course, jockeying. The actual jockeying technique I highly recommend this year is still L2, R2. In previous years, let's say FIFA 20, we could use L2 and that would all be all you would need. Yet, FIFA 22, for example, was the speed jockey technique. It's the most advanced and best way to jockey, simply because L2 by itself was way too slow to react to the opponent. FIFA 23, L2 by itself is not as bad as 22, but I still highly recommend L2 R2. That's because it's the speed jockey technique. You can adjust and adapt to the opponent as he is attacking a lot quicker than just L2 by itself. And that's why I like it, because you can adjust yourself very efficiently. What I will say though is L2 can be good to stabilize and prevent yourself from over committing. So if you are sprinting towards the attacker, what you can do is you can hold L2 as you approach them to stabilize and then activate the speed jockey technique. You might be sprinting towards them, then hold L2, then hold both at the same time, L2, R2, to use the speed jockey technique to approach them, make the tackle and essentially prevent yourself from over committing. <clears throat> what I will say though is with jockeying, the most common mistake is over committing and we need to really prevent ourselves from doing that and the best technique I can think of and what I personally use is I will approach the attacker with L2 R2 the speed jockey technique I will then back off just a slight bit to see what my opponent will do and buy myself a little bit more time to line up a lot better because a lot of the time over committing comes from not lining the defender up properly with the attacker but if we can adjust ourselves come back and line ourselves up to approach again that's when we can line the defender up a lot better with the attacker to get the tackle in what I will also say is over committing this year is more detrimental to your defense compared to any year in my opinion there is a gap with how sprinting is this year in your attack you will be in a lot of trouble i can tell you now because as soon as that gut up gap opens you can burst into it very very dangerous and it's very hard to defend if we leave gaps we will suffer so we need to avoid avoid that with this technique that i've just taught you but i also will say with the speed jockey technique and the left stick as you're maneuvering it and you're moving the player around if you hold the left stick very aggressively to the side or wherever you want to actually jockey with the defender if you hold it aggressively and by aggressively i mean essentially holding it so it clicks so it's like this and you hold it all the way they will be more inclined to overcommit. but if you hold it minutely not all the way you'll be able to line yourself up a lot better with the opponent and this will allow you guys to essentially make the tackle and prevent you from overcommitting whilst using the speed jockey technique. The final technique that I do want to actually advise for you guys in terms of jockeying and not overcommitting is something I've created personally. I haven't seen any tutorials on it, nor have I seen any pro talk about it. I created it last year and that's called the zigzag jockey technique. Basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm minutely going back and forwards with the left stick as I'm approaching the attacker and it's a zigzag technique. What that does is it maneuvers the defender side to side just slightly and it enables you to react to the opponent depending on which direction he goes. So if he goes to the left, I'm ready to pounce to the left with him. If he goes to the right, I'm ready to pounce to the right simply because I'm continuing to exercise my thumb and it's ready to go to the side as soon as he hits that skill move or as soon as he hits that dribble. That's the difference and that will allow you guys to basically react, stop yourselves from going the wrong way and over committing and jockey a lot better in people's points. Stand tackling this year, it's super, super crucial. You need to press that tackle button. It's not like previous years. We could simply line the defender up, go in, and not press the tackle button at all. It's not like FIFA 20. We could do that, essentially. And there has been, let's say, a culture created where people are jockeying, approaching the attacker, and not pressing the tackle button. It came from FIFA 20 when penalties were so easily given away in the box. So people adapted their defending style to essentially not press the tackle button. You need to press the tackle button when you are near the attacker. That is super, super crucial. So when we're close to them, when we jockey and approach them, press the tackle button to come out with the ball. And what I will say is, depending on which distance you are from the attacker will depend on what type of standing tackle you do. If you're close to them, but they're starting to get away from you, the actual lightning fast tackle, which is R1 on tackle, is better. Okay, it's the quick reaction tackle. Then you have the normal one, which is very good if you just line them up and you're actually in a good area to make that tackle. But then there's also the crunching tackle where you can hold it down and essentially reach the attacker when you're a little bit far further away that's the better technique in my opinion because if you want to come out with the ball a lot stronger holding it down is a lot better although I do recommend just tapping it in most situations 
Slight tackles. I did iterate in the base hit segment that it is so crucial this year, and they are so effective because EA have advanced them. They're super quick to get down. When you want to make that slight tackle, they're bang onto the attacker, and if you can time it right, that is when you'll come out with the ball. And it's great, essentially, when you're wanting to shut down the opponent as soon as you can. And if they take a light, large touch, you want to actually capitalize on that and use the slight tackle to do so. They're very effective this year. Can be relatively far away. That's what I've noticed with slight tackles. You can reach the opponent if you're relatively far away compared to previous years where they might flop down on the ground. There is a tip though I want to give you guys in terms of slide tackling and that is not spamming. A lot of the time people will just spam slide tackles and that is not an effective way of defending. If you're versing a higher caliber player, he will punish you day in day out. You need to only use them proportionally and only in situations where you need to get the ball back after a large touch or essentially do a tactical foul and that brings me into tactical fouls. You can use slide tackles for this. People might condemn me for promoting this but lads it's a real life tactic and if you're wanting to break up the play and essentially prevent your opponent from from counter-attacking you. Slight tackles can be a great way of doing that. You can do a tactical foul, take them out, and give them a free kick. Very good way of breaking up the play. Don't recommend spamming slight tackles, but they can be useful in that situation. The crunching tackle. That's right, the crunching slide tackle brought to us this year in FIFA 23. You're holding R1 and you're pressing the tackle button, which is square or X on Xbox. And my god, is it very useful. It's very, very rewarding and let's say satisfying when you do this and it comes off. When you tackle this way with R1 and, and the tackle button, it's really crunching and the ball clears out a far distance. So if there's a situation where you don't really want to get the ball back because there might be two or three defenders in on goal and you don't your one centre back and you need to tackle him, use the crunching tackle so it clears the ball. You don't want to risk the ball fumbling to the other attackers. So clear it. R1, tackle, and there you go. Tracking runs. I tell you what, if you don't do this, you will suffer in any year, not just 23, but specifically in this year. That's because, as I said, with sprinting and how it is, as soon as that player gets on the end of it, if they're in behind, you're not catching them, I'm telling you now. If you can track them, that's when it will become a very, very effective way of defending against these over-the-top through balls, through balls, etc., as well as the sprinting animation that EA have added in. Now, in terms of tracking runs, you need to do it first priority. As soon as you see that runner, track the runner. The way we can track the runner is by using right stick switching. If we can get right stick switching down pat, I will just let the defender closer to the attacker making the run. If you use just L1, which is what most people use in terms of switching players, and I am going to delve into player switching later on, it's super crucial, it's probably one of the most important aspects of your defense. But I highly recommend using right stick switching to select a defender to track the attacker. Because L1 will select the closest player to the ball. You will not select the player closest to the player making the run. And we need to do that with right stick switching. And you want to run alongside them. What I've found is, with defending this year, if you lose momentum, you will lose out. So if you're tracking them whilst holding L2 and R2, it won't be good enough. They will not be quick enough to catch up and keep alongside the attack. You need to hold R2 directly, and you need to run directly backwards alongside of them. If you run zigzag, you will lose momentum. You will not catch them. You need to run directly backwards alongside the defender, alongside the attacker, and track that run efficiently. <coughs> With three balls how they are this year, you will lose out. So tracking runs is super crucial. You need to do it every single time you see the run. To perform second man press, all you need to do is hold R1 or RB on that spot. And the player second closest to the ball will press the opponent and there will be an arrow above their head with a timer. And as soon as that timer goes to red, they won't second man press any longer. But once it's green, as long as it's green, you can still second man press with them. Second man press. You might be thinking, what's Aussie's verdict on it this year? Look, it's not as effective as 22. I'm telling you now. It's not. We cannot rely on it so much so. But what I will say is it's still in the game. If you're looking for something to actually team press with your opponent, you want to run up with the player that you've selected, but also press with the second player, second man press is good still to use this year. What I will say is it's not as good as last year though, so you need to bear that in mind, and we can't spam it like we did last year in 22. Okay, but what I will say is, when you're second man pressing, player this year, the defender will get close enough for you to select them and make the tackle manually. They won't get close enough to make the tackle automatically with the AI. AI will not do it for you so much so this year. Like last year, you could just hold on to it and the AI would make the tackle for you. This year, you are more inclined to select the defender, 
when they get close after you second and press with them to make the tackle manually. And the best way for you to do that is L1. You might be covering a passing lane or covering space inside. When you're using second man press, you want to have the player approach the attacker. When they get close, tap L1, allow you to select them and essentially you can make the tackle manually with the circle button or B, of course, on at spots. A great way to use second man press is when you're tracking runners. We went into tracking runners in the previous segment. As I said, it's very, very important. And you might be thinking, well, how can we press the player on the ball when we're being so passive and tracking runners? Well, that's what second man press is good for because you can track the run, select the defender closest to the market player making the run with right stick. Whilst you're doing that, hold R1 or RB, have the player who is closest to the player on the ball, then second man press him as you're tracking the run. You're doing two things at once. You're tracking runs, pressing the player on the ball. As the player gets close to the ball, player who's second man pressing that is, you tap L1, they're able to make the tackle, you can do it manually. Another good tip I can give you for second man press is essentially using it as a tool for you to cover inside passes whilst pressing with the outside player. I don't recommend selecting the outside player and using second man press which will activate the inside player to come out and press with you. Why? It's because it will leave a gap in the middle of the pitch. Let's say you have selection of the wing back and you're holding second man press, you're going to have the centre back second man press the player on the wing. What does that do? It leaves a big gap in the middle of the defence. If they can get past you and bypassed you, they will easily have a through ball on. As I said, if you can't catch them this year, if you can't actually track that run, you're done for. And it's going to happen if you do drag the centre back out. So be sure, always, if you can, maintain second man press with the outside player and have manual selection of the inside. Of course, we have player switching as a total big segment. It is so crucial this year. Three ways, three key ways of selecting players this year. L1, we then have the auto select, has four options come up on the screen. You activate that by pressing down on R3. You can then press up, side, back, or the other side, select the player that it has on there. But what I will say about that technique is it was brought to us in FIFA 22, not as effective, and that's because you have too much to think about. You don't have time to think, oh, well, I want to select him. What's that? That's right. Okay, I got that. Too slow. Okay, when you want to get up to that higher level of defending, you need to be quick. It almost needs to be a half a second select with the right stick. And that moves me and leads me to the right stick switching technique. It is super crucial this year. You need to use right stick switching. I'll tell you now, if you get right stick switching down pat, your defense will increase by tenfold. And it won't just increase by tenfold in 23, but every year that's cut to come. What I will say though is right stick switching is one of the hardest techniques of defending to actually learn. It'll take you years to master and I'll just say now, it's taken me around three to four years to master this technique of defending. It is hard to learn lads, but once you get it down pat, you will improve drastically in defense. Player switching may have just got a little bit more easier. There is actually a new animation in the game where it shows you the line of where you can select the player. Now this is very good in my opinion for players that are starting out on getting to know right stick switching and are learning it. That's why it's at the start of this right stick switching technique because it is going to help you guys a lot in terms of getting the angle. So this will help you in terms of stage one of the right stick switching technique. We are going to actually have a separate signal for right stick switching because there are actually five different stages that I like to break down in terms of right stick switching and learning and, and implement it into your game. In terms of the settings though, and you probably don't realize this is a thing, there's ball relative and there's player relative. Every single year I recommend player relative. There's people in the comments that always complain that I recommend this, but I'll hear me out. When you have it on player relative, you can select any defender that, that you want with the right stick. Because if I want to say select the right back, but I have selection manually of the left back, I need to flick once to the left center back, another time to the right center back, and then to the right back. And I can do that with player relative, but if it's ball relative, and let's say the ball is on the right side of the pitch, which is in line with the left back, if I want to select the right back, it won't make him, because it's only allowing you to select every player that's around the ball. And that's only around maximum four or five players. That doesn't allow you to select any player that you want on the pitch. I might need to track the left wing on the opposite side of the pitch, and if the ball isn't on that side, I won't be able to select the right back. So it is super crucial that in the settings you have it set to player relative. Now the five stages of player switching and right stick switching in particular is actually, firstly, getting the angles correct. That's the first stage. And the way you can do this is by going to kickoff and just practicing moving and flicking the right stick 
to the players that you want. Give the ball to the AI and then just practice flicking to the direction that you want to select the player and tell yourself, okay, let's just pretend there's a left wing running on the left side of the pitch and I want to select the right back. Bang, try and select the right back as quick as you can. And use these mental games with yourself to essentially advance your right sit switching and get the angles down pat. Then there comes stage two. That's implementing it into your game and essentially getting as quick as you can at right sit switching and getting the angles down pat. And what I recommend is using only right sit switching in your defense to get used to it. Yes, I would say a pro player uses 90% right stick switching and 10% L1 switching. However, I recommend for you trying to learn it, use 100% right stick switching. This will allow you to get used to the angles, get used to getting quicker at it, and then eventually you'll be able to get into the advanced stages of right stick switching, which I'm about to break down now. Then of course the third stage is tracking runs. Once you get the angles down pat, once you get quicker at it, you see runners, you then track them. And you select the defender closer to the attacker, run alongside them, hold R2 and track the run. As I said, the technique you can use is also holding second man press at the same time to have the player on the ball pressed. You want to select the defender closer to the player making the run. The fourth stage, it's more advanced. It's selecting multiple defenders at once or very quickly subsequently after another to press the opponent. We're using second man press to do this. I'm basically selecting between my defenders, three or four at once, moving them up using right stick switching and second man press at the same time to essentially close in on my opponent. This is exactly how MS Dossery defends and it's exactly how I defend in FIFA 23. This is very advanced, but you essentially want to run a player up towards the player on the ball, then select off him to another defender, right stitch to another defender, and then you want to actually use second man press. Again, hold R1 or RB if you're on that spot. Have the player that you initially selected run up and second man press the player on the ball. Whilst you have selection of the other defender, the second defender that you selected, to then run up towards the player on the ball. Then you select off him, another defender, run him up, and it's vice versa. You just continue doing this and you squeeze the opponent until they have nowhere to go. And I always use the saying, suffocate your opponent. You don't want him to think, you don't want him to breathe. Fifth stage is very advanced and that is anticipating the flow of the play. You can anticipate the flow of the play by using right stick switching. Essentially, selecting a defender for the opponent even thinks of where he's about to go, but you know where he's gonna go because there's always a flow of play. If there is too much pressure on one side, he's obviously gonna try and switch the ball, so you can obviously select the attacker on the opposite side to continue running towards the player that he is going to pass to. And you will know where he's gonna pass a lot of the time because there'll be a free player. We can anticipate that. If there's a pass directly into the striker and he's showing for the ball, he's obviously gonna to to do that. So before he even passes it, select the center back with right stick, drag him out in front, and collect that ball. This is very advanced, but once you can get right sit switching and the basics of it down pat, this will benefit your defense tenfold and you will defend like a pro, I can guarantee it. The final tip that I do want to give you is sometimes we can miss click with right sit switching. There's a technique that I like to use and that's restabilizing with the selection. What is that? It's using L1 to regenerate where you are. Essentially, sometimes you might misclick a right sticks into a player who's quite far away, and it would be too much for you to get back to the player that you actually want to select. So tap L1, have the player closest to the ball carrier selected, and go again. This will refresh the selection for you and allow you to start again with your right stick. Team press, I tell you what, it is back. It's still in the game, as disappointing as I am, because I just don't find it to be skill. I find right stick switching and selecting multiple defenders at once and manually defending and running them up at the same time whilst using second man press as skill. I don't think AI defending with team press is skill. What I will say though is you should use it with good reason and you should use team press only at the right times. I'll tell you now, come up against a player who is far better than you he will outplay you every time that you use team press. Even pros versus pros. You won't see pros use team press that much simply because they know that if you're good at attack, can bypass it with quick tick attacker passing, as well as a keeper technique, which I will break down in another video for you guys later on this year. But what I will say is team press is still useful. You can activate it by pressing down and then to the right with your D-pad that activates the in-game team press and it's a brief team press for about 10 seconds. But then we have 
pressure after possession loss. That's a tactic that you can use. The stamina will lose itself though if you keep using this tactic and you will notice stamina will be a bit lower half time compared to when you had it uh, in balance. But what I will say is it is very useful when you lose the ball back. As soon as you lose the ball back, the defense presses up, presses the opponent all at once essentially you can press the opponent and win the ball back then we have constant pressure don't recommend using this from the start i recommend using this around 10 minutes to go if you're down it's very good to use in within reason and at a time when there's not much left because if you use it from the start the stamina will be way too low by the end of the game you need to focus on using it only in the final minutes of the game within reason as i said Final tip though, in terms of a very, very good way to use team press, the in-game version, is when your opponent is caught within his own half and he's, let's say, made a pass out from his goalkeeper, we can a lot of the time press the opponent by activating team press. They'll all push up at once and we can hopefully catch our opponent off within their own half. Similar to how Man City defend, lose the ball or the opponents will pass out from the back and then they're bang up on them and attempting to get the ball from them. Similar technique, basically trying to catch the opponent off guard. Can also be used when you let's say doing a throw in, the opponent's doing a throw in from their own half, hit team press, they're on be, they'll be on the back foot and you'll be able to hopefully press the opponent to catch him off guard and win the ball back in a very good area. Keep a movement, I mean it's last ditch, and I pray to God that you guys don't find yourselves in situations where you're always on one on one goalkeeper situation. <laughs> Hopefully by this stage you've learned all of the above and you won't need it, but it is a very vital way of defending, it's a last ditch way of defending. Keep a movement to perform it, you press down on the right stick and you move the keeper. Okay, you can move the keeper by pressing down on R3. He will move to your movements of the right stick, but you need to keep it pressed down. Now it is very good to use when you're in one on one situations especially moving the keeper to the obvious side where he's going to shoot. Now there's a tip for you guys with this. I recommend for the first time they get on goal, you move the keeper towards the obvious side and usually it's the far post. A lot of people will shoot to the far post so you can move the keeper towards the far post. After that it's a field day and what I mean by that is you can actually double bluff them. You could use it moving to the far post again for the second time or you could move it to the near post which is the less obvious side to shoot. Why? Because your opponent will have seen that you moved the keeper the first time to the opposite side and he saved it. He'll be thinking, oh, he's gonna do it again. Let's go near post. Then you move it near post and you caught him off guard again. So it is a matter of mind games. You can use it to your advantage to basically defend and you know, cheer your opponent off guard when he's on goal. Clearing the ball. I iterated this in the base hits segment, but it's so crucial. But what I will say is to jump as high as you can with headers in FIFA 23 and beyond, you need to hold down the power button. Whether it's shooting, whether it's clearing the ball with pass or cross, you need to hold it down and that will determine how high the player will jump. What I will say though is, if you tap the clear button, they will jump as high as they can because the animation is already programmed into the game for when you tap the shoot button or tap the clear button, circle on PS5, B on its bots, player will do all they can to jump as high as they can and clear the ball. So I recommend tapping the clear button and not holding it despite the mechanic being high as you jump will depend on how, hum how much power on the shot or the cross or the pass that you do. But when you're clearing the ball it's a different situation blocking shots I mean it's so crucial it really is and with this year you need to really position them correctly because if you don't there will be deflections on goal as you know EA added in the new way of deflections going into the goal it makes it harder for the keeper to make a save which ah, I know it's more realistic but it's it's tough man it's tough I mean blocks were already bad enough you need to line the player up and the way you do that as I said you can use the technique of going towards them and backing off to essentially line them up better for when they want to shoot and you can block the ball lining the player up is so crucial so you can get them in front and stop them from making the shot. And obviously as I said you can do this with L2R2 which I think is the best way of jockeying this year. Speed jockeying technique can line them up and essentially block the shot. Another tip though I want to give you for blocking shot is you can't give the opponent too much time on the ball. You need to be up in their face, you need to be on their ass and you need to stop them and prevent them from turning. If they turn they get the shot off and we need to block that. The way we do this and we need to approach them. Approach them by holding R2 running up against them holding L2 to stabilize and then L2R2 to jockey. We can line ourselves up and basically 
would be to prevent the opponent from making the shot. If you do this, they might not take the shot at all. But if they do, you can bet your bottom dollar you'll be in the best position you, you can to make the block. Cutting passing lanes. Now, a very good example of this, and someone that's very, very good at this, is Nicolas 99 FC. I did a demonstration of how he defends in FIFA 22 last year, and it's going to be very similar this year. What he does is he will basically cover passing lanes, but instead of being so passive and just sitting in that area, he will run at a curved angle, at an arched angle, in line with the pass, but at the same time, he will approach the attacker on the ball. This number one covers the space, number two covers the passing lane to the other attacker, number three puts pressure on the opponent. This is so crucial, so, so crucial, because if you give them too much time on the ball, as I said, you've got too much time to play with, too much space to work with, there's no pressure on them, and they have time to think. You don't want them time to think. You want them to be suffocated, as I said, with the right stick switching segment. You want them to think, what am I going to do next? He's pressing me, I'm panicking, oh no, I've lost the ball. This is a good way, covering the pass, but also approaching them at the same time. There's actually a technique that I always stand by, and that's simply positioning the defender in a situation where he can cover the pass, but at the same time approach the defender. It's doing two things at once. Essentially, you're selecting the defender, running him in line, whether it's a zigzag around, to run him in line with the defender, and you'll see Nicholas99 do this as his defending technique, and I am going to have to adapt my style because I used to defend like MS Dossery, very high press, very really aggressive, but now I'm thinking FIFA 20 is more suited for that Nicholas 99 FC style of defending where he runs at an arched angle towards the attacker on the ball whilst also covering the passing lane and this is why it's super important because gaps in 23 as I said are super exploitable so there's a technique where you can essentially ensure that your defender is in line with the attacker who is free and the one that's shown for the pass whilst at the same time approaching the player on the ball and this will allow you to do two things at once and it will also allow you and prevent you from over committing and leaving too much space and gap. Bending against skill moves. Now this is actually a very similar technique to what I've already taught you okay, in this tutorial and that is going towards them and backing off slightly to read what they're going to do. It buys you time, it makes them do the skill move and by the time they've done it they can then approach them. If you just dive in and buy from the get-go, you're probably going to lose out and the skill move will beat you. It's always important to basically position yourself, approach the attacker, and then back off slightly to allow them to perform the skill move and then you can approach them. Very good way of defending against skill moves and you guys will benefit this way as well. Shutting down long shots. It is very, very similar to making blots. You just cannot give them time on the ball, okay? We're implementing different techniques, including the arc run. You can arc run in line with the passing option that might be in the box, at the same time approaching the attack. This will prevent them from making the long shot, but better yet, even if they do it, you'll hopefully be close enough to them to make the block. And that's exactly what you want. Contain defending. I'll say it's back. It's nowhere near as good as FIFA 22 and the starter specifically. It is back, you can still use it. If you're in a position where you essentially need to basically line the player up, you know, briefly, not all the way, but briefly, can hold down the pass button, which is X on its PS5 or it's A on its bots, and the player will automatically, with the AI, run towards the player on the ball. I don't really recommend this though as your primary way of defending. If you're in a beginner stage, this might be a good way for you guys to start and get used to the defending mechanics, but I recommend if you've been in the game for quite some time, start and manually defend. You can't rely on this way of defending. Pouncing on the opponent. This is actually a very advanced way of defending, but it is super crucial. And you guys should learn this because there'll be lots of situations where you can do this. What does pouncing on the opponent mean? It basically means you covering a pass or a runner and you're basically waiting for the opportunity for the opponent to take a large touch when they hold the R2 button to sprint out in front of them. Then as you read that, you're pouncing on them straight away. You're covering the pass and then bang. You're letting go of L2 as you're jockeying. You're then sprinting towards the player on the ball and you're either slide tackling or making a standing tackle. Super, very, very effective way catching the opponent off guard. He thinks he's got so much time in the world, so much space to work with, so he sprints out in front of him. Little does he know you're waiting to pounce and turn quickly and get the tackle in. This is very advanced, but once you can get it down pat, it's very, very useful. 
Last but not least, there's a quick technique I like to use when defending against counter-attack. A lot of times, people will be defending, the opponent will get the ball in behind and they'll be sprinting on goal. But what they will do when defending is they will essentially run the defender towards the attacker. Angle they're going though will always make them and end up behind the attacker and chasing him, chasing his tail. The angle you want to run when you're defending against counter-attacks is you want to get in between the goal and the attacker as quick as you can and usually that is directly straight back. It'll allow you to have momentum in the run, it won't allow you to basically stop, it won't make you slower because if you're, if you're going towards the, def the attacker and then swerving your run to basically go behind him and catch him, you'll be a lot slower. But if you run directly backwards and you run towards the angle which will get you between the goal and the attacker as quick as possible, then that's going to be the best way and best chance for you guys defending against a counter attack. We have bringing centre bats out. Now, a lot of the time people will go, well, Ozzy, you're contradicting yourself. You're telling me that I can't be dragging my defenders out of their position and leaving gaps, but you're also saying it's okay to bring the centre back out and make a tackle. What are you trying to say to me? Well, let's just put this simply. If you're confident in your defence and you can see that you have enough defenders back to compensate for the one centre back that's pushing up and putting pressure onto the ball carrier, then I highly recommend doing it. You're going to see pros doing it. You're going to see me doing it. You're going to see players that are high calibre using their centre bats to pounce on the player on the ball to get the ball, ball, ball off them. And this is where the difference comes in. If you can implement everything I've taught you in this tutorial today, this defending, complete defending tutorial, right stick switching, jockeying, not over committing, zigzag defending, everything that I've taught you, then you're going to be confident enough to defend with three at the back if you're going to use one centre back out of your four defenders to approach the player on the ball. Now there are certain times that you should do this, essentially the certain time when the opponent doesn't necessarily expect it. Progressing forward with his midfielder, but then all of a sudden you're on him with your centre back and he's like, what the hell, what do I do now? This is the time that you want to do it, it's essentially when you want to isolate the, the attacker on the ball. And there are certain times when you can do this, and as I said, it's the time when you know you're confident enough to adapt and compensate for the gap that's left open if you drag that centre back out. But let me just say something. If you drag the centre back out and you see an attacker running through that hole, you need to track it. Can not let him go free. If he goes free and you've left that hole with the centre back, boom, Bob's your uncle, the opponent's in on goal. You're going to concede. So it's, ensure, it's so important, as I said, that you know every technique I've taught you in this tutorial today before you start doing these risky at stole defending plays. Partial team press. This is very, very interesting. I made a segment on its own for this because it is new to FIFA 23. And what I will say is, to perform it, you need to tap down on the R1 or RB button of your net spots and then tap it again and hold. So you're double tapping and holding on the second tap. And what happens is it will select the two closest defenders to the manually controlled defender that you already had control of. What that does is it makes those two defenders man mark the closest two attackers. Hear me out. It can be risky in certain situations, but it can also be rewarding. And there are two different scenarios in game that I recommend using this technique, but two only. I do not recommend you guys using this in times when you're in the midfield and in times when the opponent is in on goal or is at least in front of your four defenders as their defensive line. Here's why. If you use the partial team press technique, what I've just taught you, they will mind mark the attackers closest to them. What does that do? It leaves gaps and spaces in the middle. You do not want this happening. They will run straight through if this happens. So you really need to avoid this. But there are two scenarios where I find partial team press actually works this year. I'm going to have a more in-depth tutorial on this coming into the year, but I want to put it into this tutorial, the complete defending tutorial. It's when the opponent is on the wing, and it's when he's in his own half. Here's why. When he's on the wing, he's obviously looking to take it into the wing and then find a pass into the middle of the play. Find a pass in the middle of the pitch. If you control manually a defender and you approach him and use this technique, what will happen is the two defenders inside will man mark the players, the attackers that are in the box. What does that mean? It means that they're going to be on them if the opponent so much so as to find that pass into the center. Then you're going to be able to make that tackle. 
But if he didn't do this technique, then of course they would be free to receive that pass and there'll be space for them to exploit. But you can use it when the opponent's on the wing. The second scenario is when he's in his own half and essentially what you can do then is have you know your attackers man mark the defenders. And if they're switching, well then look, you've got the defenders of your opponent being marked and then he will obviously be caught out in his own half. So those are the two situations, in my opinion, where partial team press works. And uh, yeah, I think you need to be careful, but it can be useful. There you have it. It's a complete guide to defending in FIFA 23. If I missed anything, let me know. There'll be individual tutorials all year round, lads. If you did like it though, Let's smash the 500 lights within two days and I'll get you guys a complete dribbling tutorial because of how much of a pain it is this year. Okay, lads, we've got a big year ahead. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Smash the sub, hit the notifications because there will be tutorials all year round with your boy. The No Money Spent series is back. Watch out for that. I'm coaching one-on-one. -on -one. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, lads, I've taken people from Div 10 to Elite in months. It can be done. It will be done. Go and check that out. The link is down below. Of course, check out my Instagram as well. Keep in touch with your boy. But as always, I hope you guys have a good day. I'm out. Sign on. Au revoir. Adios. Salam. Share. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. And lastly, if you do want any pre-gaming fuel or supplements, then head over to atpscience.com, which is the first link in the description, and use the code AussieFIFA at checkout to get yourself a discount. Not only is it the cheapest way to get supplements, but it helps me out a ton, guys, so thank you.